All right, in this video, we're gonna go over some of the things you're gonna encounter in one of your problems, specifically the number problem 24. Um, and we're talking about consolidated balances. So I'm gonna walk you through some of these technical things that you're gonna see in this problem to hopefully help you understand what you're trying to solve. So the first thing that we have to talk about is consolidating balances. Um, and how do we consolidate balances when we have a situation where we've stepped up the basis? Now, kind of walk you through, I'm giving you one example here, and the example is equipment. And so let's assume we are company B. We acquired company A. And when we acquired company A, they had a book value of equipment at $10,000. After we assessed all of the equipment, we noticed that the book value should have been $20,000. Or sorry, the fair market value should have been $20,000. If you remember when we talked about consolidating an organization, we say that when we buy them, we buy them at their fair value. We don't buy their equipment at book value, their book value, we buy it at fair value. And so in this case, we had what we call excess amortization of $10,000. So we would step up by $10,000. Now, because we're keeping separate books, when we're looking at two trial balances, they're gonna still report their carrying value of that equipment for $10,000. So when we consolidate, we gotta make sure that we step up that basis and also decrease that basis by the excess amortization that we're taking in that year, okay? And so in this case, um, or to sidetrack a bit, let's assume that we purchased this organization for $100,000, okay? And when we purchased it for $100,000, we noticed that their, uh, their fair market value of all of their assets were $35,000, okay? Um, sorry, their book value of all of their assets were $35,000. So that gave us $65,000 to play with. Now, we allocated, of that $65,000, we allocated $10,000 to the difference between the book value and the fair market value of their equipment because they were undervalued. So we want to allocate some of that excess that we paid for their business to that undervalued asset. And so when we subtract 10,000, we got goodwill of $55,000. So this organization that we have has goodwill of $55,000. Now, um, sidetrack even another thing, how do we get uh, this, right, this, their book value, okay? How do we get their book value when we only receive their trial balance? Two ways. The first way is we can keep track of it. So when we first acquired them, we would keep their books and we would understand what the book value is. The second one, which you're gonna be using in this problem is probably the easiest to get the book value of the organization that you purchased it when you acquired it, you add up their retained earnings, their common stock and the additional paid in capital. So that's their equity, equity of $35,000. And so if I take their purchase price minus 35,000, I get the excess over book value, which is 65,000. And then I need to figure out if there are any assets that needed to be step up. In this case, the step up was $10,000 to equipment. I subtract that step up, that's how I get my goodwill. So that will help you on one of your problems when you're trying to figure out how do I calculate goodwill. This is how you calculate it. You use retained earnings, common stock, and additional paid in capital for the acquiree. Or in this case, it would have been company A. Okay, so company A, we're looking at the acquiree, not the acquirer's trial balance, okay? Now, going all the way back to here, we had excess amortization of $10,000. We believe that the equipment would have had 10, 10 years left um, of life, and so we amortize that additional $10,000 by 10 years, okay? So that gives us $1,000 a year. So now, question is, when we combine those balances, what is the combined equipment balance? Well, the combined equipment balance would, would be, the $10,000, so we just take their book value, $10,000, plus our, okay, the transferors, okay, uh, equipment, so 75,000, so now we have 85,000, okay, that's good. Okay, but we also had a step up basis, right? That represents the book value of the equipments in the transfer, uh, the acquiree's books, okay, but the acquirer, my books, 
um, we should have it at 20,000. So where do we get that 20,000? Well, we had this excess amortization of 10,000. So we're gonna add 10,000 to it because that's how much um, it increased, okay? Now, one thing short here is we get 95,000. We're missing one thing and we're missing this excess amortization. Now, if you remember to the, from the consolidation um, video, some of the consolidation videos we talked about, we would, when we're doing this excess amortization, we may debit amortization expense and we credit the actual asset and in this case we would credit the actual asset or the equipment for a thousand dollars so we're going to carry this equipment as a combined financial statement at ninety four thousand dollars okay so let's walk you through it again we add their book value with our book value that gives us eighty five thousand however when we bought the business, we noticed that their assets were undervalued by 10,000. Well, when, I, when we acquire them, we should have acquired them at fair market value. In this case, because we're keeping separate books, we didn't make an entry for all of their assets on our books. We just did debit investment and investee account, credit cash. That's all the way back to kind of the beginning of advanced. Okay, so we have to add the excess amortization amount or the excess amount, which would have been $10,000. That got us to $95,000. But every single year, we're gonna be taking $1,000 off of that balance because of something called excess amortization. And we're amortizing it for 10 years. So in this case, we're gonna subtract that 1,000 because we would have had a credit for equipment and debit and amortization expense for the excess amortization. Okay, so that's 94,000. So that should help you with the combining of that. Now, combining of net income. Well, the first thing that we do with net income is we need to take revenues and add them together. So 20,000 to 40,000 gives us 60,000. Now, before I get to expenses, let me make uh, this understanding. Um, when we're talking about we're adding revenues and of both company A and company B, we're saying that let's say we acquired them maybe a year ago or maybe we acquired them on 1-1. One -one. So whatever money they made is actually our money too. So we're not saying, this is not one of those instances, this is an example, this example is not an instance where we acquired them on 1231 and then the next day we need to consolidate all of our financial statements. What we're saying is that we might have acquired them on 1-1 one, one of this year. We've gone through a full year of owning them. Now we're at 1231 of this year, and now we need to consolidate. Well, what, because we were owners on 1-1, one, one, whatever revenues they had is now our revenues. Whatever expenses they had is our expenses. So that's why we're adding these together. Whereas in a previous lesson, we didn't add them together. And the reason why we didn't add them together because we bought them at the end of the year and then the next day we we're trying to consolidate. So this is an example of we've already owned them for one year, their income is now our income, okay? So revenues, $60,000. Expenses, we add them up and we get $22,000. So, Thereby, our net income would be what? It would be $38,000. Now, that would be fine and dandy, except for one thing. And that one thing is that excess amortization up here. Okay? Now, this, remember, this is before we do any of the adjusting entries or the worksheet entries for consolidation. So, before we do the consolidation entries um, to consolidate. Well, these numbers don't include that 1,000. Okay, so we need to include that 1,000 here, and that would give you $37,000, okay? So the net income for this organization is now 37, not 38,000. Why? Because we're taking an additional $1,000 deduction for that excess amortization. Now, one of the other things that you're gonna be looking at is retained earnings, combining retained earnings. Now, I didn't put the full retained earnings here, but I'm kind of giving you an equation with this right here. So, when we're trying to combine retained earnings for the full year, so again, we acquired them on 1-1 one, one of this year, we're now at 1231, we've owned them for 12 months, at the end of the year we need to consolidate and we need to consolidate the retained earnings. Now, what I think a lot of people think about is, okay, how do we, do we just take ours and take theirs? 
um, and put them together? Well, we don't. So this whole going across thing works for revenues, expenses, assets, and liabilities. It does not work for dividends and it does not work for any equity accounts. So remember, assets, liabilities, revenues, and expenses, you add across and then you do some of these additions and subtractions based on the rules that we talked about before, okay? Equity and dividends do not work that way. Do not add equity or revenue accounts across. So this includes retained earnings, this includes um, dividends, additional paid in capital, common stock, treasury stock, all of those accounts do not add across. What you'll need to do for retained earnings is this. You'll take the return, retained earnings at the beginning of the year for the parent only. We don't care what the subsidiary's retained earnings are. So we just want the parent's retained earnings. From that, we're gonna add our net income that we just calculated. So we just calculated this $37,000. So that's the net income of the consolidated. Now, we subtract dividends paid by the parent only, okay? So we don't care about the dividends that the, uh, in this case, company A or the acquire repay, we only care about company B, the parent company's dividends, okay? So if, let's say, for instance, retained earnings for company A, and we're just gonna uh, put this up here, $7,000, but then company B had 12,000, we're only gonna put 12,000 here as retained earnings. We're not gonna add across, okay? Now, net income for the consolidator was 37,000, so we're gonna add those two together, and we get 49,000. And then subtract dividends. Let's assume that company A paid $3,000 of dividends, and let's assume that company B paid $4,000 in dividends. According to this equation, we don't care what the dividends were paid for by company A. Those, that was the acquiree. So for the acquiror, or the parent company, it was $4,000. So we're gonna subtract $4,000, and we have now a retained earnings of $45,000. So that's our retained earnings of the combined corporations, okay? Now, why don't we care about dividends paid for by company A? That's because if we own them right outright, we're receiving the dividends. And so that's an intercompany transaction and we eliminate that, okay? And so that's why we don't we don't subtract the dividends paid to us cuz we got them, okay? Which means they're probably in our net income, which means we've already accounted for them. Okay, so a couple of things that we talked about is the uh, first thing is uh, assets, adding ass uh, assets across, but also including the step up basis that we need to take, uh, take into consideration. So step up basis of $10,000. We also talked about the excess amortization um, expense here that has to reduce the equipment and increase the expense over here. Revenues and expenses we add across and then we take into account the excess amortization up here. And then we talked about goodwill. How do we look, find goodwill if that goodwill is not given to you, which it may not be given to you in this problem. Uh, the way that we do it is we take, all, we take our purchase price, our original pur purchase price, we subtract from that our equity accounts, so retained earnings, common stock, additional paid in capital, that gives us $35,000. That gives us $65,000 there. We know that this was undervalued by $10,000, so we're gonna take the uh, excess over book value and give $10,000 back to equipment because that was undervalued. And then the rest goes to goodwill. That gets us our goodwill balance, okay? Last thing that we needed to do was include or combine retained earnings for the full year. The full year, we take the retained earnings at the beginning of the year for the parent. So we figure out what the parent's beginning uh, retained earnings was. To that, we add to that net income of the consolidated, which we calculated here. And then we subtract the dividends paid by the parent. Parent only $4,000. That, in total, gives us our retained earnings for the combined corporation or the combined financial statements, okay? Now, again, remember that this example only considers an organization that we've purchased, let's say, at the beginning of the year, and then this is now at the end of the year, so we've owned them for 12 months. Another example that this could fit in is maybe we bought them five years ago, 
and now we're five years later, so we're sti we still own them for 12 months, so we're still gonna combine all of their things for 12 months, especially when it comes to um, revenues and expenses, and then retain earnings from the net income and dividends paid by parent. So hopefully that will help you get into get through problem 24, which is all about consolidating numbers and looking at some of the equity accounts from that standpoint. In